Yo, RIP to George Floyd. My prayers and thoughts are with your family, but this cannot keep happening. I repeat, this cannot keep happening. Black Lives Matter is nice, but it's not working. It's actually not working. These type of people don't understand the language of a peaceful protest. We have to speak the language that they understand. We cannot sit down and reason with them peacefully. So as the elders say, those who can't hear must feel. We need to start taking our money out of this system. Unfortunately, that's the only language that they truly understand. So a couple of years back, um, I called out Nivea about a skin bleaching campaign that they were doing. I was seeing billboards all over Africa, um, especially Ghana, where, um, where I am. And um, people started throwing out their Nivea products out into the toilet and just destroying their products because these guys were capitalizing on the insecurities of the local people in Africa. Within three days of everybody just throwing away their Nivea products, these guys pulled down all their billboards, all their TV commercials across all the African regions um, and actually just discontinued this racist product. So these guys understand very well how to behave when their bottom line is, is actually threatened. America is the same. We need to speak the language of America, which is undoubtedly money. You know, Martin Luther King began moving towards um, economic voting before the CIA actually killed him. They were happy um, seeing Martin Luther King preaching peacefully, non-violence, um, until he started speaking about uh, uh, economics. And that's when they weren't happy. Um, we all know that real power in America sits with the donors, the financial donors, not the actual parties themselves. Business runs America. So if you actually want to communicate with America, we have to speak business with America. So black people in America spend over a trillion dollars annually. And this is just in America. Globally, we have even more spending power. So I think the global African diaspora, we need to start unleashing some uh, economic plagues on America and the American products. Until then, they're never gonna let our people go. We need to unleash economic plagues on their products so they can let our people go and they can live peacefully. And because this is getting too drastic now, this is not a joke, we're losing too many people and these guys are our brothers and sisters. You know, it's very mad. Um, I watched uh, Charlemagne and Joe Biden's interview and you can clearly tell that regardless of what party that you vote for whether democrat or republic the situation will never change until black people fight to make that change happen themselves we have to fight to make this change happen ourselves it's very clear that biden obviously thinks that the black vote is for free so to all the black people in america i know your elections are coming up this year and i just hope that before you decide to vote red or blue you vote green before you vote red or blue, vote green because every dollar that you spend is a vote. More importantly, every dollar that you don't spend is even a greater vote. And all of us outside of America, we need to support our brothers and sisters internationally and actually help them do what's happening right now. So Martin Luther King called for this boycott uh, uh, back in the day and he literally boycotted uh, a couple major companies and coca-cola was one of them we should probably start there if we want to see change we should probably pick up from where uh, dr luther king started from so what a lot of people don't know is um dr martin luther king actually was invited by honorable kwame Nkrumah to come to ghana during uh, uh the independence you know when ghana finally um uh gained independence and freedom itself from colonialism they stood together back then because they knew the same way that the struggles that they were facing in america uh it was that the struggle in america intertwined with the freedom of black people across the world so it's the same way that you know our people are struggling in america you know we can relate to that because unless our people are free in America, we cannot be free in Africa. We cannot be free as a diaspora. So therefore, our hope for freedom, our hope for freedom is definitely intertwined. I'm Fuso DG. I was born and raised in London, but I'm currently living in Ghana. So again, to all my people in America and across the diaspora, we're gonna need you to think about an exit strategy at some point. 
and I just need you guys to know that the motherland has an open arm for you guys you know you have a place ready for you in the motherland where you can come a place where you don't have to justify your existence as a black person a place where you and your children can live unapologetically black without the fear of, of being stopped or killed and I know right now it's very tough because we're not allowed to travel physically with our bodies but we can travel emotionally and spiritually so mentally and spiritually we can travel and we can connect so let's start with our hearts and minds because where the mind goes the body will follow so let's meditate on Africa let's meditate on our freedom and if you're black I love you you're strong you're blessed you're unbreakable and you are royalty so let's stick together and let's fight this together you guys let me know what other American companies should go on this boycott list because we need to start speaking their language right now I actually wrote a song with the legendary Damian Marley for times like these called breath here which means come home you guys have a home in Africa but you guys let me know what companies we should be boycotting in order for these guys to take us serious let me know your thoughts yes people Fuso DG here first of all big up everyone that's been sending in their suggestions on the American companies that we need to boycott like I mentioned in my previous post we need to speak the language um, of America which is undoubtedly money the real power in America lies with the financial donors not the actual parties themselves and since America only seems to understand the language of business we need to speak business so it's time to unleash some economic plagues on America and its products until we get the justice and the peace that we deserve until they let our people live their black lives in peace so the first company that we are going to boycott is coca-cola and as i mentioned in my previous post is based on a suggestion of the late great uh, martin luther king who um, called for a boycott on coke before he was unfortunately uh, murdered in cold blood by the u.s government so stay tuned for more information on that and we are going to kick that off as soon as you see this video um, but big up everyone that's been protesting across the world and especially those in America who are protesting directly in the face of um, racist police it's so inspiring to witness your actions and um, I've seen videos of women being um, shot with rubber bullets and children being pepper sprayed and you know on one hand um, uh, we marvel at the bravery and on, on the other hand it's so scary to see our people go through so much for their basic human rights of justice and it's also very shocking to see the weak international response that we're getting from the UK, France, the UN um, these are the same people who are quick to invade other countries um, for weapons of mass destruction that don't even exist or quick to invade other countries um, for their crimes against humanity but they're nowhere to be seen when America commits crimes of humanity against its own citizens um, really they should be there right now um, protecting its people uh, protecting the people from its government um, we really need an international response but the international governments have made it very clear that we the people we are on our own it's all up to us it's up to you it's up to me it's up to our friends it's up to our aunties and uncles it's really up to us and just to put things in perspective for people who think that the riots um, are not the answer and a lot of celebrities have been posting that it needs to stop I know a lot of people think it's not fair because of all the local businesses that's being destroyed but it's also unfair and indiscriminate to have people's lives killed people's lives taken at random um, historically freedom have never been one with a fight I've never heard of an oppressive regime that just woke up and decided that you know what what we're doing is not cool let's give the people their freedom America and the UK they love to celebrate their famous abolitionists like Abraham Lincoln and William Wilberforce uh, and act like it's, it's because of them um, that it's only because of them that slavery was ended but it was actually the enslaved Africans in Jamaica who burned down the plantations um, that made Britain realize that it was too expensive uh, because money talks um, and they started thinking about the abolition of slavery it was Nat Turner that was burning down the plantations in America that actually inspired abolitionists in the northern states to consider the humanity of enslaved Africans it was um, Toussaint Louverture and the Haitian army who fought for um, their freedom through their military power and um, trust me if it wasn't for these people fighting we would not have a fraction 
of the freedoms that we have today and I say freedoms because ironically um, what a lot of people don't understand is that in 2020 we are still living on a plantation and that's that that's really the heart of what the people are rebelling against so we have to stand with them um, we are in an evolved plantation a system where black people are constantly at the bottom um, socially politically and economically and this has been uh, uh, exposed so clearly by COVID-19 and on top of that to add so to injury we are being lynched in 2020 this cannot be serious um, this week is actually the 99th anniversary of the Tulsa um, massacre um, if you don't know about the Tulsa massacre or the um, Black Wall Street um, search it up because evidently a hundred a hundred years of being nice hasn't gotten us anywhere and we all know the saying madness is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results so the system does need to be burnt down we do need to fight however we need to fight strategically um, we need to box smart and I'm, when I say we I'm talking about you and I we need to uh, channel all this anger and, and this energy into economic action because um, that's the only language that they will understand and it's the only way that we can protect our people from being murdered and pepper sprayed um, during a uh, peaceful protest and listen if you take anything from what I'm saying to you today um, is the biggest trick or the biggest lie that the white supremacist um, system has told us is that we are a minority black people don't let anybody tell you that you are a minority you have a whole continent of over a billion people who looks just like you globally black people have an annual spending of over 3.9 trillion us dollars yeah and just to put that in perspective if it was its own independent state that would make it the fifth largest economy in the world and i think that's that's always been the the fear of the slave master um that the enslaved will wake up and outnumber them um, on the plantation um, we literally we have power in our influence um, and we have power in numbers but unfortunately we have been carved up divided and conquered so we need to reverse that we need to flip that and we need to unite and emancipate um, mentally and econ economically uh, a new African nation with a new mentality that's based on self-love and as I mentioned before it's time to start a global boycott on American products until we get the justice and the freedom that we deserve as a people until our problems become their problems um, we have to uh, boycott globally so they can listen um, I know a lot of people are saying that it's going to be hard for black people to stop their spending but I think really it comes down to us seeing the whole situation for what it really is it's life and death we managed to um, obey a lot of uncomfortable life-changing rules um, that were enforced on us due to coronavirus because it was life and death but guess what that's exactly what this is life and death this is very simple nobody's asking you to risk your life nobody's asking you to stay indoors 24 7 we just need to stop buying certain products we don't need any politicians or anything fancy we just need to take action and change our buying habits so let's unite by checking up on each other let's emancipate ourselves mentally let's meditate on Africa our home let's meditate on our sovereignty um, let's meditate on our strength because we have survived up until now you are strong you are unbreakable you are royalty you understand real power is in frantic you know as we say in Ghana real power is not giddy giddy like real power is not chaotic it's not necessarily loud real power is calm it's collected it's intentional and it knows what it knows we just need to be intentional about our goals and what we need to achieve which is our freedom and justice so I'm calling on all black people and human beings who stand with us to help in three ways yeah one share this video and tag anybody that you feel need to hear this message Two, register to take part in this boycott and add your suggestion to the website boycottforjustice.com Three, if you're a black business, sign up as we are creating a directory um, for alternative black businesses because it's really time for us to invest and build our own economy. So let's stay connected and let's take this next action together. If you don't take any action, any of these actions, at least just do something because silence is compliance. Like I've said, we are starting with Coca-Cola 
and we will be adding more companies as time goes on and um, it's clear what we need to do it's clear what you need to do it's clear that we need to take action and we need to take it now and this call of action is from your siblings in the motherland I'm Fuse ODG and let's build this new nation together let's boycott for justice I'm believing in paradise Too many angels learn how to fly What the life, what am I for die Hope they're watching over us like satellite Summertime wasn't quite summertime August we lost 14, no valentines Them man the try, why we man alive Man it doesn't make sense when we analyze Happy New Year but we hearing cries Feeling paralyzed Sometimes the pain is necessary But getting up again is extra scary One day we'll reign You and I name in the Hall of Fame Legendary Sometimes the pain is necessary But getting up again is extra scary When there's too much rain And all these lessons in life I learned from January January Oh January 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 Oh January one day so sorrow in January Now I know what time's borrowed in January January Oh, January January, January Too many bodies in your cemetery It's hella scary Tears on my jersey I hope it dries up in February Oh, January You give me sky but you give me grey Wondering why you could be this way <laughs> Finding it hard just to keep my faith Oh Lord, can you give me grace? Cause last month you promised me happy I'm losing everybody Picking on my cocky, you're licking on my doggy January shocked me So I'm trying to spend time with my people From London down to Labadi January marred me, moving like a Bekazi Then couple my cars, he told me that he loved me He held me a hug, he said he just lost his mommy He put his head upon me so if you love somebody, just hold them tight I hope you can take my advice twice Cause 31 days out of 365 I hope I don't shed no more tears from January January Oh, January 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 Oh, January 31 days of sorrow in January Now I know our time's borrowed in January January Oh, January January